we are here on a peace mission. Very peaceful. Uh, we have come as I have introduced ourselves as heads of churches of the various uh, associations and groupings uh, in Ghana. Our history has it that uh, the church has played a very uh, significant role in our development and in the welfare of our people. So as major stakeholders, when things become of concern, we are all uh, to take it up and see how best we can find answers and uh, resolutions to it so that at the end of the day, what we preach and what government governance is all about can be achieved all to the glory of God. Uh, getting to the last uh, quarter of last year, we all experienced uh, what our country uh, has never experienced before, maybe from the very beginning, from the very first uh, month when we had our parliament as it is now as you rightly mentioned whether we have a minority or we have a majority whether the, but the hang parliament when it came to the hilt uh, when they were about closing with the introduction of the budget and the the year levy and what went on the last but one day of parliament where they were exchanges resulting in some fights and all that and uh, the churches or the Christian bodies became alarmed and said we will not sit but we want to take a very bold step in seeing harvest together we can find solution to it so we have made various uh, approaches uh, we have met uh, the Minister of Finance, we have met uh, the majority in Parliament, the head, we've met some members of the minority, we also met the Minister of Finance again for discussions. Then our last meeting was with the President of the Nations. When there we also had a very fruitful uh, interaction with the Speaker of the Right Honourable, a Speaker of Parliament. And uh, we seen that uh, there are other major, major stakeholders for whom we need to also make approaches and see how best we can uh, find answers to what is happening to us. Looking at all the circumstances and the conditions around us, especially what is happening in our sub-region, not only looking at what is happening here in our country, but what is even around our sub-region. And uh, it became very necessary at our meeting that the series of inter interventions and interactions, uh, we cannot leave His Excellency, the former president, behind, but to also make a move to see him and see how best we can all have discussions and look at what is happening to us in our country and if there is a way out by which we can all look at it and come to a resolution. To get a detail of you know what our concerns are, you will understand the viewpoint from which we are coming. But I do think that this meeting is timely and um, it's good to hear from all sides and I'm sure that by the time you have heard what we have to say you realize that the problem is much deeper than you think. And that's why I brought some of the MPs here. That fight was a fight for democracy. There's no way a speaker can sit in the chair, relinquish the chair, let somebody else come and sit in it, and take a vote in something that he has presided over. The constitution is clear. You take a voice vote, eyes or knees. If somebody challenges it, it means that we don't agree with your choice. So you, the speaker, must sit in the chair and do a division. And then you say, I've done the division, the accounting. I'm now going to get out of the chair and let the second deputy speaker who has voted come and sit in so that I can also go and vote. It, it, I mean, our constitution doesn't allow that. And it was felt that our MPs should sit 
timidly and let them pass this unconstitutionality, it won't happen. And so, yes, I'm happy that that rowdy scene has woken your consciences that you must intervene because there's a lot that is happening in this country that if we don't intervene, you know, it would upset our democracy. The Fourth Republic has been the most enduring and we must protect it. And all of us must stand up and protect it. Dialogue is not just the only issue. Dialogue comes from the ruling party. We are in opposition. We have nothing. If the ruling party says come and dialogue, of course we will come and we will sit and dialogue. If you are bringing something like e-levy, why was there no dialogue before you introduced it in parliament? It's only after you introduce it and there's a pushback. Then you say come and let's dialogue. But you go and set your 1.75% and then you bring it and say because there's a pushback, the country is pushing back, the minority is pushing back, then you say okay let's dialogue. Okay, I'll give you 1.5. It's like we are negotiating in Makola. E-Levy is not a problem. E-Levy is a symptom of what has gone on for the last four years. I mean, government feels that it can ride roughshod over everybody, take its own decisions, bring anything into parliament, do whatever it likes, pass any, you know, uh, decisions that it wants without dialoguing after all, we are 169. And so the current 137, 137, it's a withdrawal symptom. And so government has to climb down from its high horse and realize that the people of Ghana have been tired of that tyrannical, dictatorial majority rule that they have carried out. Without consensus building, without dialogue, even if you are 169, it still helps to, 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 to get...